Today we're going to look at uh, for the project management part, earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish. Just with the other, like the other part, we start with <clears throat> our activities. We code the activities. We know which one comes before or the immediate predecessor, and how long each activity will take. So basically, you know, I plotted out. Uh, drawn the graph activity chart, you know, A will take three weeks, C will take four, so on down the line. From that, we've seen previously with PERT, we can uh, chart our activity path and see how long it takes. So my path A, B, E is going to take 10 weeks. My path C, D, E is going to take 12 weeks. So C, D, E will be my critical path here. And the critical path is 12 weeks. To get everything on the board, I'm going to have to erase a little bit. So just keep in mind that the critical path is 12 weeks. All right, what we're going to look at now is, um, uh, first of all, let's get our terminology down. You notice before, we were just working with the activity code and the activity time. So the activity code and the activity time, they go on the, the blocks on the left. Um, the top row here is our earliest start or earliest finish. The bottom row is our latest start, latest finish. So we have to um, come up with the early start and latest start and finish for each one of our blocks. Again, <clears throat> we're going to calculate it. The earliest start, earliest finish, latest start, latest finish. And we're also going to look at slack. In this case, uh, slack is extra capacity. In this case, our capacity is time. So it's extra time. Let's start looking at our earliest start, earliest, uh, our earliest start to begin with. Typically, in engineering terms, um, projects begin at t equals zero, or zero time. So, we start, we have two elements we can start with here at A and C. Both start at zero time. The clock doesn't start ticking until we do something on these two uh, projects. From there, we can calculate our earliest finish time by the earliest start plus the activity time. So for A, it's zero plus three equals three. And for C, is 0 plus 4 equals 4. <clears throat> now we move over to our next column. B can't start until A is completed. So the earliest start we can have is week 3. Similar with D. D can't start until C is completed. Then we go through and we do the same calculation again. For B, our earliest start is 3, our activity time is 5. For D, we have 4 and 6. So 8 and 10, respectively. All right, next we move on to E. E has two items feeding it. Both B and D. With this, we can't begin E until both these operations are complete. So even if B is done in eight weeks, we still have to wait the 10 weeks for D. So we take the larger of these two, and that becomes our earliest start. 10 plus 2 is 12. Now this is where I also told you to keep an eye on our critical path. Because you notice our critical path equal 12 before. These two numbers should agree, because um, we basically mapped out the critical path in time here. All right, now that we have the earliest start and earliest finish, let's work on the latest start, latest finish. What we did with the earliest start, earliest finish is we did a forward pass. We worked from left to right. What we do with the latest start, latest finish, is we do a backwards pass, where we work from right to left. 
other words, we stop at the end here. All right, we know our critical path is 12. We really don't need to calculate it because we've calculated it here too. So we know we have to finish up. Our latest uh, finish can be our critical path time if we want the project to remain on time. <clears throat> so we have 12 minus 2 equals 10. So right here, we know that our uh, latest start is week 10. Um, now this goes two places. This goes to our latest finish of our two immediate um, uh, predecessors here, the operations that come before us. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. We just bring it straight back. We do the same thing, we calculate the latest start. So we have 10 minus 5 equals 5, 10 minus 6 equals 4. So we have, whoops, almost wrote 6 in there. <clears throat> so there we have our two uh, latest starts. BE only has one immediate predecessor, so the time comes over here and C only has one, so this comes over here. All right, so we have four and five. We do the same thing, we start calculate the latest start. Five minus three equals two, four minus four equals zero. All right, so there we've calculated our latest starts and our latest finishes. The next thing we can calculate is slack. How much extra time do we have at any given operation? <clears throat> and um, slack can either be uh, the latest start minus, I mean the latest finish minus the earliest finish, or um, the latest start minus the earliest start. You notice that the numbers will give you the same results. For example, for A, if we wanted to calculate the slack, we could do 2 minus 0, which is equal to 2, or we could do 5 minus 3, which equals 2. Again, just showing that it doesn't matter how we calculate it, either way, the numbers are equivalent. Again, 5 minus 3 is 2. For C, 0 minus 0 is 0. For D, 4 minus 4 is 0. For E, 10 minus 10 is 0. So what this is telling us, first of all, is we have two weeks of slack in these two operations. Second thing it's doing is showing us our critical path. Because we have zero slack, and by definition, that has to be our critical path. 